In this video, let's talk about ELQ model, or economic order quantity model. ELQ is the order quantity that minimizes the total inventory holding costs and ordering costs. There are generally two costs associated with order quantity, holding costs and ordering costs. Holding costs are also known as carrying costs. They are charged and computed for each unit held in storage. Holding costs typically cover storage, capital costs, warehouse costs, insurance, etc. Sometimes, holding cost is expressed as a percentage of the purchase cost. The ordering cost is a fixed cost for each order placed, regardless of the number of units ordered. Typically, the ordering costs cover the cost of placing and receiving order, such as shipping and handling. Intuitively, if you order a large quantity each time, then you order less frequently but have more inventory. As a result, you will incur a low ordering cost annually. On the other hand, however, you will incur a high inventory holding cost annually. ELQ is to determine the optimum number of units to order so that we minimize the total cost associated with the purchase, delivery, and storage of the product. The ELQ model is based on the following assumptions. First, the demand is known, constant, and independent. By that we mean the demand is independent of our decisions, independent of demand for other products. Second, lead time, the time between placement and receipt of an order, is known and consistent. Third, Receipt of inventory is instantaneous and complete. That is to say, the inventory from an order arrives in one batch at one time. Fourth, quantity discounts are not possible. And fifth, the only variable costs are the cost of setting up or placing order and the cost of holding or storing inventory over time. It is clear that these assumptions are not realistic. However, all these assumptions can be relaxed, resulting in more complex models. For example, we will relax the no quantity discount assumption later on. Overall, ELQ model provides a solid starting point in understanding the inventory management theory. Let's look at variables and notations we use in ELQ model. Capital P is the unit purchase price or unit production cost in a production setting. Capital Q is our decision variable or the quantity. Q star is the optimal order quantity or EOQ, economic order quantity. Capital D is annual demand rate. And sometimes we use little d to represent like daily demand or weekly demand or monthly demand. We are going to see that in our example. Capital S is the fixed cost per order or setup cost per setup. Eta H is the annual holding cost per unit. It is also known as carrying cost. Now let's take a look at the total cost function in an EOQ setting. The total cost is the sum of three costs. Purchase cost or production cost, ordering cost, and holding cost. Purchase cost is equal to unit purchase price times annual demand, or using our notations P times D. Annual ordering cost is equal to ordering cost per order times the number of orders per year, that is S times d divided by q, number of orders per year is also called order frequency. In order to satisfy the annual demand of capital D, we need to order, let's say, n times. But remember, each time we order q, so 
the ideal scenario would be m times q equals d. As a result, how often are we going to order annually? It's going to be d divided by q. Annual holding cost is equal to inventory holding cost per unit per year times average inventory. That is h times q over 2. Remember, Q is our order quantity. By our assumption 3, we are going to receive the inventory in one batch at one time. That is to say, when we receive an order, our inventory will go up by Q. But what will be the minimum inventory? That will be 0 when we run out of inventory. So the average inventory will be Q plus 0 divided by 2 or Q over 2. So using our notations, the total cost TC is equal to P times D plus DS over Q plus HQ over 2. Now let's see how we can derive our EOQ formula. To determine the minimum total cost, we partially differentiate the total cost function with respect to Q and set it equal to zero. That is, dt over dq is equal to minus ds over q squared plus h over 2, which will be equal to zero. If we solve this equation for Q, that will give us the optimal order quantity Q star. And the formula for Q star is square root of T times D times S divided by H. Here's something interesting. When we order EOQ or Q star, the annual ordering cost will be equal to annual holding cost. To prove that, you can simply substitute the formula for Q star back into the formula for annual ordering and annual holding costs. And you will see that those two costs are equal when we order Q star or EOQ. Next, let's look at one example. Cat Lovers is a distributor of a very popular blend of cat food that sells for $1.25 per can. CLI experiences demand of 500 cans per week on average. They order the cans of cat food from the Nutritious and Delicious Company, N&D. N&D sells cans to CLI at 50 cents per can and charges a flat fee of $7 per order for shipping and handling. The lead time is one week. CLI uses the economic order quantity as their fixed order size. Assume that the opportunity cost of capital and all other inventory cost is 15% annually and that there are 50 weeks in a year. And we would like to answer the following questions. A. How many cans of cat food should CLI order at a time? And B. What is CLI's total order cost for one year? C. What is CLI's total holding cost for one year? And D. What is CLI's weekly inventory returns? Next, I'm going to turn to my Excel spreadsheet. First, let's see what information is already available. We know weekly demand is 500 cans per week, and more often than not, we use little d to represent weekly demand or daily demand or monthly demand depending on the time unit we use. And CLI operates 50 weeks per year. As a result, the annual demand capital D will be equal to weekly demand times 50 weeks per year, the annual demand would be 25,000 cans of cat food. And we also know that unit purchase price is 50 cents. And what would be the holding cost per unit per year? To get our age, 
we also know that the annual percentage holding cost is 15%. So the holding cost per unit per year will be equal to 50 cents times 15%. To stay consistent with our lecture, we're going to use liter H to represent unit holding cost per year. In addition, we also know that ordering cost per order is $7. That is our capital S. And we also know that the lead time capital L is one week. Based on the information provided, we can actually answer many, many questions. Let's see some of them. First and foremost, we want to find out about EOQ or Q star. And we're just going to apply our EOQ formula over here. It's going to be equal to square root of 2 times D annual demand times S. Ordering cost per order divided by H. Holding cost per unit per year. Return. And our EOQ is 2160. That is to say... Uh, it is optimal for COI to order 2160 cans of cat food from the supplier each time. Once we know Q star, we can find order frequency our little a easily. We want to match our supply with our demand. Annual demand is capital D. Yeah, how much supply are we going to get? Each time we get Q star, and we are going to order n times, so the total supply would be n times Q star. So the n will be equal to annual demand divided by our Q star. So COI needs to order about 11.6 times per year to meet the demand. Next, let's look at annual ordering costs. Two different ways of doing that. First, we've already known the order frequency, 11.57. Each time we place an order, it costs us $7. So the annual ordering cost would be equal to order frequency times S, which is about $81. Alternatively, you can use the original formula, D times S over Q, you are going to get the same answer anyway. Okay, average inventory as we talked about earlier is equal to half of order quantity Q. So it's going to be equal to Q star divided by 2. The average inventory would be 1080. Based on that, we can find annual holding cost easily. It's equal to H times Q over 2. H is 7.5 cents per unit per year. And Q over 2, which is our average inventory, is 1080. Return. Our annual holding cost is also $81. As we talked about earlier, this is not a surprise at all. When we order Q star or EOQ, those two costs should be equal. Next, let's calculate the total cost. First, purchase cost is equal to unit price times annual demand. That's our annual purchase cost. Plus annual ordering cost, $81. Plus annual holding cost, $81 as well. So the total cost is $12,662. Next, let's calculate reorder point ROP. The meaning of reorder point is this. ROP is the inventory level at which we need to place the next order. It doesn't make much difference in our simple EOQ model because everything is constant, no uncertainty whatsoever. 
But once we introduce uncertainty into our model, such as demand uncertainty, a better way to handle inventory ordering policy will be like this: we monitor our inventory level, and once our inventory level in our warehouse drops to a threshold of value, which is real to point, and then let's order the next batch. In a case without uncertainty, the formula for calculating ROP is pretty easy, which is equal to、uh, little d times L. In our case, little d is 500 cans per week, and lead time is one week. So the real order point is 500 cans. In other words, we are gonna monitor our inventory of cat food in our warehouse. Once the inventory drops down to 500 cans, it's time for us to order again. And once we answer the above questions, it becomes very easy to answer the questions of this problem. Question A: We are looking for nothing but our EOQ. We have that already, so we're just gonna copy and paste over here. Next question B: What about annual ordering cost? We knew that already as well, right here, eighty-one dollars. Question C: Annual holding cost? Well, they are the same, eighty-one dollars. Question D: Something new. What will be the weekly inventory turn? We are gonna use our old friend Little's law. First of all, let's see what would be the、uh, flow rate on a weekly basis. That is nothing but our weekly demand. It's going to be equal to 500 cans per week. Step two: What about our inventory? Remember, in Little's Law formula, strictly speaking, we have average inventory is the average flow rate times average flow time. So here, the inventory we're looking for indeed is our average inventory. We knew that already. To calculate inventory turn, it's equal to one over flow time, or it's equal to average flow rate divided by average inventory. So it's going to be equal to flow rate 500 cans per week divided by average inventory of 1080. Our inventory turn will be. Point four six two nine per week. In case we want to find out about the flow time, it's easy. It's going to be equal to our inventory q over two divided by our flow rate five hundred. So the flow time is two point one six weeks. That is to say, on average, it takes about two point one six weeks. For cat food to go through our systems, 